Okay, let's talk about the TSIA, and that stands for the Texas Success Initiative Assessment. And uh, basically, uh, what we're going to be doing in this particular video is be looking at a math problem that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for the TSIA. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for uh, the T Texas Success Initiative Assessment, which is, uh, to my best understanding, like a placement exam. It's going to determine where you're going to be placing in terms of uh, different subjects and whatnot. Obviously, we're going to be focused in on uh, the math section here. So all these exams that you have to take as a college student um, are important. So you really want to fully prepare. And by virtue of you watching this video, you're clearly taking the TSIA uh, seriously. So uh, we're going to get to this problem here in a second. But let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years have constructed many online math courses to include a TSIA math prep course. I'm going to leave a link to that in the description of this video. All my uh, courses that I develop have taken me years to build and I really do a lot of research on you know, um, the available information that's going to be on the TSIA and try to come up with a really nicely aligned math prep course because you don't want to you know, study for this particular uh, exam, for example, um, you're not going to have to know calculus to, to do, <laughs> to take this exam. Okay. I would characterize the level of math here. You know, it's maybe like just high school level math, algebra, geometry, and some other stuff. That's really going to be the key, your kind of key focus in terms of the skills you need to have. But uh, you don't want to, you know, you don't have to go in and, and, and learn calculus. For example, you probably may not even have taken that course. But Again, you know, high school level mathematics is kind of the, the, the focus, you know, or way to kind of characterize what you need to be focused on. So with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at this practice problem. Again, you should be able to handle this pretty nicely if you're fully prepared right now for the TSIA math section. Now, um, what I'm going to do is explain the problem. Then for those you can do the problem, do the problem. By the way, do, do not use a calculator. That's first thing on this particular problem. Um, so then I'm going to give a hint. So if you don't want to hear the hint, uh, I'll warn you, right? I'm going to give uh, those of you out there who need a little bit of a hint, a hint, and then obviously I'm going to solve the problem. Okay, so here we have a situation going on. What I'd like you to do is to simplify this expression, write this in the simplest way uh, possible without the aid of a calculator, okay? And um, Effectively, I want you to use your knowledge of square roots and radicals, okay, all the properties and, and laws of those to rewrite this in a simpler form, okay? So just as, you know, we have fractions, let's say we had 30 over 50, we wouldn't leave our final answer as 30 over 50, we would what? We would simplify this as three-fifths, okay? So the concept of simplification, writing things in their simplest way is, um, you know, uh, uh, something in mathematics that we want to do. Like if you left your answer like this, you're not, if you don't leave your answer fully simplified, yeah, technically uh, us math folks, we, we are not satisfied. <laughs> we will look at this as incomplete work or you're not finally done. So anyways, with that being said, this particular expression is not fully simplified. So I'd like you to write that, write it in its simplest way possible. All right. So hopefully that's um, a pretty good description of uh, the problem. And um, so I'm going to give a hint now. So if you don't want to hear the hint, go ahead and pause the video and try it. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about it, uh, a hint. All right. So we're dealing with square roots here. And uh, when we're dealing with radicals, really, because we're very, uh, the technical reference to this stuff, we have a set of rules, okay? So, uh, for example, if I had the square root of 20, okay, you can you can rewrite this square root of 20 in terms of its factors, all right? So the square root of 20 is the same thing as what? 4 times 5, but I can write the square root of 4 times 5 as the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. So I can split apart this and uh, these uh, a radical like this into two little sub radicals, 
And the advantage of doing that is what? Well, I know this, what the square root of 4 is. That's plus or minus square root of 2, all right, uh, times the square root of 5. Now, most of you probably said, oh, that's just going to be 2 times the square root of 5. And, yeah, that's fine, too, but really there is a negative there as well, just to be you know, very precise about this. So what we've done is taken the square root of 20 and we wrote it in this manner. So that's what I'm looking for you to do. And this is an illustration of uh, uh, using the factors of a, of a square root of a radical. We can kind of pull them out like so. Now there's other properties, and we're talking about division and some other things. In, and here, I don't want to give you a crash course and get into all those properties because this is stuff that you, you're, you're going to need to review. But hopefully this is enough to kind of jog uh, some of your memories out there. Okay, so with that being said, that's my little hint there for you. Now let's go ahead and get into the problem. So there's a couple of different ways you can approach this. But I, I, I wrote this as a fraction because I wanted to illustrate another property is we can uh, write this as one big radical. So we can write this as 80, uh, the square root of 80 over 20. So if you had the square root of 80 over 20, you can break it up into uh, two uh, separate square roots with the numerator and the denominator. But now when I have the square root of 80 over 20, what do we have? 80 divided by 20 is what? That's 4, right? So that is the square root of 4. Okay, so hopefully you're saying, oh boy, okay, this is now easy. And now I have uh, positive negative 2. Square root of 4 is equal to positive negative 2. And that would be a super easy problem. Okay, now uh, it was easy because you knew the properties that I can go from these two little radicals into one big radical and I was able to do this, but let's um, let's kind of mess with this problem a little bit more. Let's do these in the. Let's say you didn't know this that you can write these uh, one square root, um, the square root uh, of a numerator and denominator as one big square root like so, and let's just simplify each of these. So uh, the square root of 80. Let's do it this way. Square root of 80 and the square root of 20. Let's break these down and just see where this problem takes us. Uh, um, by just factoring each of these. So let's use 4 as a factor. So we know that 4 times 20 is 80. So I can write this as uh, the square root of 4 times the square root of 20 over, I have the square root of 20 down here, right? Square root of 20, so that's the square root of 20. So you can see how the, you can get to this answer in a couple different ways. This is not the most effective way, but you can kind of say, oh, I have a square root of 20 up here. These are factors. I could cross cancel. I'm left with the square root of 4, which again is positive negative 2. Okay. So again, uh, when we're dealing with radical situations, you know, there's different approaches. This is the most direct approach. Um, but anyways, you need to have a strong grasp on radicals. Now here we're only simplifying. All right. We haven't even talked about how you know we deal with a situation like the square root of 80 plus the square root of 20. Now we're talking about a whole different ball game um, in terms of adding or subtracting uh, square root um, expressions like this, right? And, and I'm not meaning, hey, go into your calculator and turn this into a decimal, turn this into a decimal, and add them up. You need to be able to know the rules of square roots or radicals, same thing, okay? So that's really important. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, this is, you know, high school level algebra. And, um, but anyways, uh, you're going to need to know this stuff no matter what. Okay, you're going to need to take the TSIA and whenever you land into college, whatever math course you're going to be taking, this is going to be uh, certainly part of the skill set you're going to have to, you know, have in your back pocket, if you will. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Um, again, I'm going to leave a link to my TSIA math prep course in the description of this video. All my courses have taken me uh, several years to construct, put a lot of effort in, uh, into them. And if you like my teaching style, my best work is in my courses. But uh, if you're new to my YouTube channel, I literally have hundreds of uh, videos on my YouTube channel that can help you out. And I'm posting stuff all the time, so hopefully you consider becoming a subscriber. If you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate it. A thumbs up and leave me some feedback. Um, you know, uh, any feedback is good. How did you do in high school math? Did you, do you like math? Uh, maybe you don't like math. Um, 
uh, you know, do you have a major? Do you, are you thinking about, you know, what, what college, you know, any feedback is good feedback. Um, again, by virtue of you, of you, you know, uh, watching this video, you're clearly committed to doing well, not just on the TSIA, but you take your education seriously. And that's, uh, that's the main indicator of success. So even if you struggle in a particular area, if you work hard, you know, at, you know, your education, you'll be able to get through, you know, the tough areas. And there's always are the challenging areas. You know, for me, challenging areas is like grammar and stuff. <laughs> Obviously, I'm a math guy. Uh, but, you know, if it wasn't for things like spell check and things like that, I, I find that stuff really hard. OK, so some of you find math very difficult. We all have our aptitudes. But when you're working on your education, you're going to have to be a well-rounded person. So the more math you know, the better off you're going to be in the long run. Okay, so uh, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the TSIA and all your educational um, goals. Uh, thank you for your time, and have a great day.